All right, what's up guys? In this video, what I wanna do is just kind of work on using the order of operations to simplify some numeric expressions. So yeah, we're gonna do the PEMDAS, the GEMDAS, whatever you have been taught or, or can remember about following the order of operations because it's really important why we have the order of operations. If we're not applying the same rules when simplifying or solving, we're not gonna get the same answer. So we wanna make sure everybody in the whole wide world is going to be working through the problems using the same rules. So again, just to go ahead and do a quick little review, I'm gonna use PEMDAS even though I know there is some content controversy the way we use it. I know the controversy with the way the acronym is, but again, that's the way that I taught it. And again, it's something that I'll just reference some of the ways that people get confused when looking at PEMDAS. So the acronym PEMDAS just represents parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. And a couple of the problems with PEMDAS is students get confused because they always think, well, multiplication comes before division. And that's not the case. And the same thing with addition and subtraction. No, it's just going to go left from right. Those are actually going to be interchangeable, but we can actually say PEMDAS rather than PEDMAS, which doesn't really have, I guess, the same ring to it. Another issue that we come up with is the parentheses. Well, it's really not just parentheses. We also are going to use brackets, right? Any kind of grouping symbol. That's why GEMDAS is preferred by some other educators. Whatever you can use that's going to help you understand these rules, I think the better. So use PEMDAS, GEMDAS, or any other acronym that's going to help you. You just got to make sure you're following the rules correctly. And again, that's going to work from parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. And again, the main thing also that this leaves out is when we're doing the multiplication and division or the addition and subtraction, we're going to work from left to right. But we'll definitely go ahead and explore that as we get through these examples. And I'm going to do 14 of these examples for you so we can get right into it. Now, in this first example, a couple things I want you to understand. Whenever we have a number right next to a parenthesis, the implied operation is going to be multiplication. Now, you might say there's parentheses here. Yes, but inside this parentheses, there's really nothing we can do, right? It's just a two. We can't simplify that any further. So therefore, I can just go ahead and rewrite this. You don't need to take the time to rewrite this, but you can go ahead and rewrite this as a three times two. Now, we know that multiplication has to come before addition. So three times two is going to be a six. So I'll have a five plus six and then five plus six is going to equal an 11. Now in the next case, again, we don't have any parentheses, right? So I'm going to go immediately to, uh, do I have any multiplication or division, right? Remember, we got to group these together just like addition and subtraction. You know, you can see here we have a three times a two. Don't worry about the signs for this case. We just need to make sure we multiply these. So three times two is going to be a six. So we're going to keep all the signs. So five minus a six plus four. So again, remember addition and subtraction are grouped together. So we're not going to do addition before subtraction. We're just going to work from left to right. So by doing that, I have a five minus six, which is going to be a negative one plus four. Negative one plus four is going to equal a three. In the next example, we have some parentheses, right? Now this parenthesis is special. We actually have an operation we can perform. We have 16 divided by two. Well, I can do that. That's just going to be an eight. Now I'm going to keep them in parentheses just because I want you to see something. Once you just have one single number inside the parentheses, you can get rid of it. So that's kind of the nice thing about having parentheses is when parentheses are provided in a problem, there's usually a reason. There's usually a reason because they want you to do that problem first, or they want to show that certain numbers or expressions are going to be grouped together. So in this case, we had this operation. We wanted to do this one first, which we did. But now we don't really need parentheses anymore, right? There's nothing else we can simplify inside these parentheses. So therefore, I'm just going to write this as an 8 minus a 4 times 5. Now, 4 times 5 is just going to be a negative 20, right? Remember, you do multiplication before addition and subtraction. So 8 minus 20, and 8 minus 20 is going to equal a negative 12. Now, in the next example, I have a parenthesis inside a parenthesis. Whenever you're working with parentheses, you always want to do the innermost parentheses first, right? Now, again, there's really nothing I can do with this 5 here. So again, we don't really need it, right? I can really probably just rewrite this problem as a four times five cubed. Now, again, I need to make sure I simplify whatever's inside my parentheses before I get to my exponents or simplify anything that's in my grouping symbol before I do anything with my exponent or my power. So four times five is just going to be a 20 cubed and 20 cubed. Remember that's 20 times 20, which would be 400 times 20, which is going to be an eight. Now, in this example, you can see we have exponent minus an exponent divided by an exponent. But remember, exponents, if we, we need to go ahead and do that first. So I'm going to have two to the fifth power, right? So you basically, what you can do is, you know, you can put them as exponents, but you can also kind of like group them together if you want to. You got to make sure you're doing the exponents first, right? Now, there's no parentheses, but I inserted them so we can make sure that we simplify that first before we do any multiplication, division, subtraction, or addition. So two to the fifth power is going to be a 32 minus a four to the second power, which is going to be a 16 divided by a two to the fourth power, which is going to be a four. Now, again, remember, we are going to work from left to right, but we got to do multiplication and division before we do addition and subtraction. So 16 divided by four is just going to be four. So I have a 32 minus a four. 32 minus four is going to be a 28. Now in this example, you can see we have parentheses and we have an exponent, but again, we don't want to distribute this exponent or we don't want to square anything because we have to simplify what's inside the parentheses first. Four plus three is just going to be a seven. So therefore we have that quantity squared and seven squared is going to equal a 
49. Now in this example, again, we have more things that are going on inside the parentheses, right? So always work inside those parentheses first. Now inside this parentheses though, we have our own order of operations we need to follow, right? I need to follow the exponents before I can add anything. So I have a six squared, which is going to be a 36 plus four minus 15. So 36 plus four is just going to be a 40 minus a 15. Then we have a 40 minus 15, which is going to equal a 25. Now in this example, we have four times six squared divided by three plus seven. Now there's a lot going on in this one. So again, let's just kind of review what we want to do. Do we have any parentheses or grouping symbols? No. Do we have any exponents or powers? And yes, we do have some exponents power. So I'm going to do that exactly first. And again, I think it's really important when you have multiple things going on in a problem and you need to simplify by order of operations, just do every step once. It might take a little bit longer to like rewrite or write out the problems, but just take a step by step. So therefore I have a four times a 36 divided by three plus seven, right? Six, two is 36. Okay. Now I need to do any multiplication and division. And again, remember we have to work from left to right. So I have the multiplication and then I have the division. Now four times 36 is going to be 36 times two is 72. So that's going to be 144, 144 divided by three plus seven. So 144 divided by three is going to be a 48 plus seven. And now we only have one more operation. 48 plus seven is just going to be a 50. Five. Now in this example, again, we have our parentheses. So 20 divided by five is going to be a four cubed minus, be careful now, we don't want to multiply the 10 times three, right? We have this three squared. So we have to apply the powers first. So we have a 10 times a three squared. So I'm just going to do my parentheses. Now let's do my powers. So four cubed is going to be four times four to 16 times four, which is going to be a 64 minus a 10 times three squared, which is going to be a nine. So 10 times nine is going to be a 90. So therefore I have a 64 minus a 90 and 64 minus 90 is going to be a negative 26. Now in this example, we have inside the parentheses, right? Now we need to simplify this. Now, typically inside the parentheses, we're supposed to do multiplication and division first, but this is a fraction. Like how do we, how are we going to do division? Well, we can't do division unless we simplify our numerator and denominator. So some couple of things that PEMDAS gets wrong is it doesn't tell us to simplify our denominator before we go ahead and divide. So yes, what we have to do is we have to treat each numerator and denominator separately when we're simplifying a rational expression. The first thing I'm actually going to do in this problem is actually going to subtract in my numerator and subtract in my denominator. So 27 minus 12 is going to be a 15 and eight minus three is going to be a five cubed. Now I can go ahead and simplify this. A 15 divided by five is going to be a three cubed and three cubed is going to be a 27. Now in this example, we have brackets. If you look at the PEMDAS, we didn't talk about brackets, right? Well, brackets is just another grouping symbol. So just remember, we can treat them just like parentheses if you wanted to. And again, when we have double sets of parentheses or more than one parenthesis, we always want to work from the innermost parenthesis first. So in this example, a four plus eight is just going to be a 12. So again, I'm going to do everything step by step. So 12 minus a three cubed. Now three cubed, we know from the last problem is going to be a 27. So there Therefore, I have a 12 minus a 27. 12 minus a 27 is going to be a negative 15. 5 minus a negative 15 is going to be a negative 75. Now, here's another example where we have parentheses inside brackets. So again, just work on the innermost parentheses first. And again, I'm just going to do this step by step so you can follow along. So inside my innermost parentheses is 7 minus 10, which is going to be a negative 3. So I'm just going to rewrite everything. You can see, guys, I'm doing a lot of extra work, but it's really important to keep everything organized. Now, I'm going to work on my exponents inside the bracket, right? Because that's my next grouping symbol. So I have a negative 3 plus 2 is going to be a negative three times negative three, which is a positive nine. Now a nine plus five is going to be a 14 and a 14 squared is going to be 196. And now you can see, I just need to multiply two times 196, which is going to be a 390. Two. All right. In this example, again, we have parentheses inside brackets. So again, we're going to work on, on this. So 32 divided by 16, that's just going to be a two. So I have a two cubed minus five cubed. So now what I want to do is just do my exponents. So a two cubed is going to be an eight minus five cubed. Eight minus five is just going to be a three. So again, we have a three cubed and three times three times three is going to be a 27. And in this example, basically, again, what we have is a fraction inside of parentheses. So again, we need to simplify our numerator and simplify our denominator. So two times negative two times four. So again, it doesn't really matter working left from right. Just multiply everything in your numerator. So two times negative two is going to be a negative four. Negative four times four is going to be a negative 16. Now, in this case, we actually need to work freer from left to right. So negative four times two is or it's going to be a negative eight. So I have a 12 minus eight, and then we'll have this cubed. Now, 12 minus eight is going to be a four. So therefore, this is a negative 16 over four cubed. Now, negative 16 divided by four is going to be a negative four cubed. Now, negative four times negative four times negative four is going to be a negative 64. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, this was helpful for helping you with the order of operations. If you need more examples, then check out the playlist I have below or check out the next example where we use the same idea of following the order of operations, but to evaluate with algebraic expressions. I'll see you guys there. Cheers.